Hello friends. Before we start today's video, first I want to give a shout out to my good friend Eddie in Thailand. You know him on his YouTube channel as Retired Oki living in Thailand. And he sent me this really nice CT125 cap, which are only available in Thailand. And that was so nice of him. And I want to thank you, Eddie. It's uh, very nice. And uh, of course it's yellow like I was hoping to get because uh, our New Mexico colors are red and yellow. And so as you all know, I like to put some yellow accessories on my stuff to go with my bike. I've got a nice new yellow helmet so we can keep our state colors going. So thanks, Eddie. I appreciate it. Good morning, Vietnam. All my service buddies that went to Nam, we've got a little video for you today. Well, I've been doing a lot of videos on my Trail 125. I've got it all fixed up the way I want it now. And it's time to move on to something else. We're going to put the little donkey out to pasture for a while. And we're going to uh, move up from a donkey to a mule. I got my new Royal Enfield Himalayan. I know here in the United States we say Himalayan, but where this come from in India, they say Himalayans. They live by the Himalaya Mountains, and uh, it's less syllables to say Himalayan, three syllables instead of Himalayan, four syllables. So we're going to call this by the name that they gave it over in India, and it's the Himalayan. It's the mule. It's faster, higher cruise speed, and it hauls a bigger load and has a longer range than a donkey. So this is my new 2021 Himalayan, complete with Royal Linfield saddlebags or panniers. And we got it home yesterday. And we're starting to do some service and learning things on it. A little cold in here today. New Mexico is cold and rainy today. Well, anyway, when I got it home, the first thing that I noticed did work on it was the gear shift indicator. It registered zero and neutral like it's supposed to, but when you went to the gears, it had a little flashing dash on it. A little uh, line, little black line that just flashed. So the first thing we had to do was get that fixed. The other thing we got to do is when the weather gets a little warmer, we got to go out and try to recalibrate the compass. It didn't calibrate during the figure eights. I tried the magnet on the back, I didn't do it. So I had to uh, reset the uh, sensor for the, for the uh, gear shift, the gears over here. So I took the seats off, disconnected the negative of the battery for about half an hour, put it back on, and then all the gears started working in it. The headlight shined way up there at the top of the trees. So we had to cut some zip ties off here so that we could move the wiring out of the way. And then we took the plugs out of here, loosened those, and was able to move the headlight down. You can't move it down unless you cut some zip ties here to get this wiring out of the way. I'll just give you a quick walk around today. We're not going to be able to do much or take a ride on it till the weather straightens up. But uh, I put one of the bottle holders, the water bottle holders, 
off of my CT125. I had two of them on here, one on each side. I took one off, and I've got my first aid kit in this one. So some things I've got to do to this is you can mount uh, gas tanks or water tanks on these little carriers. They're crash bars for the gas tank on the Himalayan. So I don't have anything on this side yet and I don't know what I'm going to put on there for sure, if anything. I wanted to put my K, I've got a second KLR bag. I wanted to put it on the back of this, but the carry rack is way too small. So I may have to weld together an adapter and put on top of that to carry that. But in the meantime, I've got a little bag that I've had for years that I took off of bikes in the past and uh, it unsnaps right here and it extends in height so that you can get a full face helmet in it I went all over the bike and uh, tightened every nut and bolt on it made sure everything was good that's one thing that's recommended by the owners of these that oftentimes you'll find that they have some loose bolts and nuts that'll things will fall apart on you when you're riding so we'll uh, make sure everything's nice and tight on that the pressure in the tires was low and the uh, dealer didn't fill the tank up they're so cheap they tried to charge me for installing the panniers $150 and I told them when I called uh, the parts department to see if they had them in stock, I had them put my name on them, but they, uh, I told them not to install them. They asked me if I wanted them installed. I said, no, I want to do it myself. And when I got there, the dealer had already installed them. They wanted $150. So I argued with them. They came down to 75. So I told them to get the mechanic out there and take them off, put them in my truck. Because I wanted to do it myself. I wasn't going to pay $75. And they finally decided to just throw it in. So we got them mounted. They did a pretty good job. There's these little mounts right down here that don't set level and everybody bends this a little bit in a vise to make them set level, which I was going to do before putting them on. You can see there's a little gap on the back here. But they already have them on and they seem nice and tight and work good, so I'm going to leave them. That was one thing I wanted to do myself. So anyway, we got it home and I uh, called the dealer about the gear shift indicator not working. And uh, they said they was going to email Royal Enfield service techs today and find out how to fix that, see if it was something I could do so I don't have to drive 190 miles or so over and back to take it over to the dealer, possibly have to leave it and make another trip. But I uh, haven't heard from them yet. It's afternoon. So I went online and Googled it and found uh, the fix was pretty simple. So I took care of that. Overall, it's a beautiful bike. It's called Lake Blue. Lake Blue. Very pretty. I kind of wanted the uh, slate or sleet gray, which was a gray camouflage. And they paint the fender to match the tank, but they don't do that with the other colors. So they didn't have that one. And this was my first choice originally, and then I thought I might want the other one. But I couldn't find one, so I went back to my first choice and got the only one they had. They sell as quickly as they get them in here in the United States, so the dealers are not willing to deal on them at all. I called... Colorado and Arizona and uh, couldn't get anybody to give me a better price well I could have saved a hundred dollars but I'd had to drive 1200 miles so I just decided to go ahead and pay this dealer their $49.95 plus setup and shipping came to $56.12 $5,612 altogether it looks like Somebody must have 
touch the exhaust right here and then when it was started up that stainless steel which is this kind of brownish color before it's ever run but now I've got a spot on it I'm going to try to take that off today with some acetone but everything else seems to be in real good shape on it it's got a nice loud horn which most motorcycles don't have That'll be nice. I won't have to put an air horn on this one like I do my other bikes. Couldn't find any place to put it on the little Honda, but I had it on my KLR 650. And I can't find a place to put one on my Vespa either, but I put one on my Jeep and I really like the loud air horns. Anyway, this one is a lot simpler to work on than the uh, KLR was because KLR had uh, shim under bucket or shim over bucket. I'm not sure what you call it. I think it's shim under bucket. Um, on the KLR, you have to take the whole top of the engine off. You have to pull the camshafts out. It's a big job to adjust the valves on it. This has got the standard motorcycle adjustment just like on the CT125, you just pull the gas tank off and you can get at the little covers. Uh, you can't probably see them, but they're right up under here. Take the covers off, you can get at the valves. And not all that difficult to adjust the valves on it. So the dealer did overfill it. It's sitting on the center stand. This is really difficult to get up on the center stand, not like my other bikes. KLR didn't have a center stand, which I always miss. But anyway, they've got it overfilled, and I tried to run a hose down in here with a suction to pull some oil up, but you can't actually touch the oil. So I'm going to change the oil the first 300 miles anyway, so hopefully it won't damage anything until I get 300 on it. And then I'll put the correct amount in. Unlike the Honda, this does have a real good chain on it. It's uh, got a sealed chain. It's got the rubber O-rings in it. So that should be high quality. And it does have an adjustable preload for the rear shock. And since I'm real lightweight, I put that all the way down low. This does ride a lot stiffer than my KLR did, which was a very soft riding bike for cross-country work. So oh, I'm hoping this one breaks in a little bit more and uh, we'll get a softer ride. The seat's fairly comfortable. They make a touring saddle for it, which is a little wider. And after I ride this a while, I may end up going to that to get the ride a little softer. The handlebars are a little too far forward, long reach while you're sitting on the bike leaning forward. And you can buy risers that come up and back at the same time. So I'm going to buy the risers for it and set that up. I have some hand guards coming for it that I ordered from Amazon that I'm hoping will fit. They're a double attachment. They attach out here. I took one of these out to check and their uh, mount, their threaded insert is permanently made in there. So it's not like the uh, CT125 that just kept rotating around. And uh, so this one has got uh, good solid mounts there. And in the second mount, there should be plenty of room on the handlebar over here. I don't know what this handlebar is coated with or powder coated with. It does scratch. They put a few scratches on it when they were assembling it. But it's, um, I don't know, it's kind of a real dull, aluminum-ish type finish but it's supposed to be a steel handlebar you can buy an aluminum one from Royal Enfield